Hello world, police hacked this encrypted messaging app and Iranian government hackers launched an operation over a cartoon contest. That's all coming up in today's roundup of cybersecurity tech news. Police have hacked and shut down an encrypted messaging app that was quite literally hosted in a former military base. Now this story is amazing, illustrating perfectly how dumb some criminals can be. We're talking about ExcluChats, which according to its website, is the most sophisticated communication platform. On the face of it, the app does look kinda underwhelming and basic, but the real selling point here is security. And luckily enough, ExcluChat's team have many years of IT security experience. With ExcluChat, you can encrypt everything. If this sounds like a lot of buzzwords and no substance, well, that's because it is. And we've basically gone through their whole single page website here. This is pretty much their entire sales pitch. So how much does access to this amazing app cost? 900 euros for six months. That equates to $2,000 per year, a fee that can of course only be paid in Bitcoin. Now, if I had to speculate, I'd say the users of this app are largely technically illiterate criminals who are convinced by this admittedly well-designed website that ExcluChat is just what they need to level up the security of their criminal enterprise. And at 900 euros for six months, it must be infinitely more secure than something like Signal, which costs zero dollars, right? Well, even if ExcluChat did deliver on all their security promises, history has shown us that when a messaging app is almost exclusively used by criminals, it attracts the attention of police like moths to a flame. And it didn't help that the operators of ExcluChat were just as dumb as their customers, choosing to host their service in what was at the time the world's most infamous bulletproof hoster, Cyberbunker specifically Cyberbunker 2.0, a data center located within a former NATO military base in Germany. By choosing to host their servers here, they were pretty much guaranteeing that when police did inevitably raid it, they'd be giving the authorities access to their entire operation. And on one autumnal day in 2019, 600 German police raided the facility, shutting down all kinds of nefarious operations. Whilst ExcluChat did manage to migrate to other servers, the raid put them in the sights of authorities, but more importantly, gave police the ability to infiltrate their operation. Exactly how they managed to do that isn't explained in the police's press release on a technical level. Instead, they just vaguely refer to using the hacking power. Using this hacking power, German and Dutch police have for the past few months been listening in on the supposedly end-to-end -end encrypted conversations of people using the app, mapping out the various criminal enterprises using ExcluChats, an operation which concluded last Friday when they raided 79 properties in various European countries, arresting 48 people, all either users or operators of the app. Strangely, ExcluChat's website is still up, with the police not yet having gotten around to seizing the domain. And at the time of its demise, 3,000 people were using this app, which via the extortionate fees will have been generating about $6 million per year. You know, it'll never cease to amaze me how criminals manage to put their trust in these kinds of apps. I mean, even if we put to one side how wishy-washy and vague ExcluChat's sales pitch was, there's a lot of precedence for police taking out these kinds of criminal-focused messaging services. There was EncroChat, which was shut down in 2020, and then just a year later, there was Anom, a messaging service marketed to criminals, which turned out to quite literally be an FBI honeypot. If you want to hear more about the story behind Anom, I'll link to my video on it at the end of this video. Charlie Hebdo, the satirical magazine, a household name thanks to the deadly attack perpetrated against them in 2015, has been hacked by the Iranian government. Well, at least according to Microsoft. The intrusion first became public early last month on Breach Forums. Yeah, apparently government-backed hackers are now using Breach Forums. A user claims to have gained access to the database of charliehebdo.fr and was selling it for 20 Bitcoin, about $450,000. Included in the dump is the personal information of a quarter of a million of Charlie Hebdo's customers, as in people who were subscribed to the magazine, information like names, emails, and physical addresses. This information being public is bad, potentially deadly, because of course public supporters of Charlie Hebdo have a habit of losing their heads. Take the example of a teacher who had this happen after simply showing his students one of their cartoons. 
And as far as we can tell, the leak is legit. The miscreants made public the first 10,000 records, and a French newspaper was able to verify people in the leak were subscribed to the magazine. In addition to the personal data, the leak is said to include documents belonging to Charlie Hebdo, things like invoices, tax reports, and classified documents, whatever that means. The post links to an email address for potential buyers and a YouTube channel apparently run by the group. Remarkably, the video announcing the hack, which itself doxes hundreds of Charlie Hebdo readers, remains live over a month after it was posted and this story receiving widespread media attention. I tweeted YouTube support about it, but got no response. The hack coincided with a campaign of Twitter bots, all tweeting the same screenshot of the Charlie Hebdo website apparently being defaced, but there's no news of any actual defacement of the site, so as far as I can tell, this is probably a false flag. And I do find it kind of funny that despite trying to hype up this hack, no one, it seems, cared. Well, at least in the hacking community. The Breach Forums thread only got one reply and a mere handful of views, with the same going for their posts on other hacking forums. As for who's behind all this, a group going by Holy Souls. You won't find anything about them on the Googles, and their accounts on various hacking forums are all new. Because, according to Microsoft researchers, this group is just a front for Neptunium, otherwise known as a group whose name I'm probably going to horribly mispronounce, Eminets Parsagad. Said to be run by the Iranian government, these guys are well known, already on the radar of the Department of Justice for their operation to influence the 2020 election, an operation they were actually sanctioned for. But why would these guys go after a magazine? Well, the running theory is that this was done in response to a cartoon contest Charlie Hebdo launched, which invited their readers to produce caricatures of the Islamic Republic of Iran's supreme leader, something the French ambassador to Iran was actually summoned over. But this theory doesn't account for the fact that the hackers are trying to sell the dataset. You would have thought maximum damage would be done by just leaking the dump in its entirety. This video is sponsored by Sumsub. This super cool YouTube channel is all about how to survive in what they call the online jungle. Each month, they release a video investigation on emerging new technologies like deepfakes, neural networks, and AI art. They also make sure you know how to protect yourself online, sharing cybersecurity tips each week in their shorts. The Sumsub team is made up of real-life digital security professionals fighting against money laundering, terrorist financing, and online fraud. And in their spare time, they provide you with some serious nerd knowledge that you certainly won't find anywhere else. In a recent video, the Sumsub team investigates how and when AI is going to usurp our jobs. But it's not all doom and gloom. The Sumsub team also shares cybersecurity tips and tricks, like how to detect keyloggers or how to spot a deepfake. Make sure to sub to Sumsub using the link in the video description. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll make sure to have that video I made on Anom linked on screen. And other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.